Join me for today's session where we take a look at the VMware Hybrid Cloud Assessment. Stay tuned. Welcome, Travis Lawrence, Systems Engineer with Aero ECS. Uh, today, I thought we'd touch on the VMware Hybrid Cloud Assessment and really provide you an overview of what the HCA is and how it can help you and more importantly, your customers understand and tie in really the costs for their on-premises private cloud resources and public cloud resources like Amazon Web Services, vCloud Air, or Microsoft Azure. So really what the Hybrid Cloud Assessment or HCA is, is a tool that allows us to do just that, really uh, connect those dots from a technical perspective to a business perspective. So as, as you can understand, obviously, it's been great to be able to virtualize resources over time, meaning compute memory, and as we get into things like NSX networking, but it's really the value only comes into the business when the business can understand from a dollar's perspective what that looks like. So the HCA really provides kind of two things. One is this initial piece where we have a cloud business analysis report. So this is a PDF report that comes uh, out of the appliance and allows us to really show customers and more importantly business units what the costs associated with those different resources are. So if we kind of take a look at this here, we'll just go through a few items. Again, this video I really intend to help you understand the value behind the HCA assessment. And then as, as is needed, we'll kind of follow on with other videos to talk about how we deploy the appliance, how we interpret some of these results. But this just kind of gives you a high level view of what this is and is it fit for those cloud practices, those virtualization practices, those data center practices that you have in helping those customers kind of make that transition from maybe all on-premises infrastructure to a hybrid cloud environment and where we really utilize those cloud resources and where it still makes sense for us to have those on-premises pieces and, and the costs kind of associated with that. So again, from this this report perspective is one piece of it. And then the other piece of that is the vRealize Business for Cloud component, which will look at the dashboard. And that provides kind of a more interactive mechanism for us to go through. So again, the initial piece of this is we use the vRealize Business for Cloud appliance. Within three hours, we can really connect data, collect data rather, and understand the customer's environment from that vCenter perspective and from some data that VMware's collected over you know, average costs for things like operating systems and uh, manual maintenance and those different things where we can aggregate those into this report and then to that more interactive dashboard. So let's take a look at the report and then we'll also take a look at the vRealize Business for Cloud interface where we can look at the more of the interactive pieces. So I would say first, probably the lead-in piece is the reporting part is something that you can kind of deliver to your customer in a, in a shorter session and we can talk through some of the points and then the interactive that bring in the interactive dashboard because i think that's really where the compelling piece is to say well this is what your on-premises vSphere in infrastructure looks like now or if you have some of those cloud pieces or now we can compare what is the cost of a virtual machine that you uh, that you provision on premises for a business unit like finance versus provisioning that or deploying that in infrastructure service in microsoft azure or amazon web services but from the cloud analysis report, again, the, the end result is this PDF document that kind of gives us that lead-in discussion piece. So uh, we can start off, I won't go through this whole thing, but just to give you kind of an inkling of what this, what this provides overall. So first we can see some, some costs around data center. So in vSphere, we can talk about the data center constructs, which is a virtual data center that's comprised of multiple hosts and virtual machines. Um, this assigns a cost to that based on the data that VMware has. And then again, that data from your customer's vSphere instance and pulls that together. So you can see we have multiple virtual data centers. We can see overall that assigns a dollar value. In addition to that, we always wanna see how many virtual resources each data center has. Again, once we transition from really that that physical infrastructure where we could go in the data center and count all the boxes and say, these are finance servers, these are R&D servers, um, we moved into a virtual world where we're more efficient with things like CPU and memory, but we lost some of that visibility. So when we have 20 or 40 or 60 virtual machines on a given uh, single physical server or on a cluster of servers, we, we gained efficiency, but we lost the ability, some of that ability to assign you know, costs to specific cost centers, specific business units. 
Um, and this allows us to gain some of that back. Again, with the virtual machine count, we want to know how many virtual machines are out there because it's very easy for us to, you know, within minutes to go click and create a virtual resource. Well, it's hard to assign costs to that as we once would have because it's not physical. It's, it's out there in the virtual world. It's something somebody can create in software, and it's not something we can easily map back to that cost center. So that kind of helps us with a high-level perspective. But from, as we get down into this, we can actually see specific virtual machine counts and actually understand some of the costs associated with that here. So average cost per virtual machine, end-of-month cost for that particular virtual data center. So that's valuable. Again, trying to start to tie that back and help our business units understand what the costs of IT are, what the costs of their applications are, so they can focus their financial resources in those places where it makes the most sense. I'm kind of continuing down here. We can look at things like showback statements. So what were your costs last month in particular business units? Again, we can assign tags to certain virtual machines or application groups, and we can say, you know, the accounting group cost, end of month cost was $5,000. That's more, that's an increase from the previous month. Why is that? We can start to dig in some, into some of that data. We have some analytics information on that. So that's really helpful for business units to quantify that. Because again, as an IT department, we're here to interpret that, uh, the technical technological pieces for them. Um, but they want to be able to understand the business, the dollars piece. So that's this is a tool that really helps us kind of meet in the middle in that regard and say, here's what the cost is. Here's the value we're bringing to you. Um, we can tie that value with that cost and kind of show that and break that down a little bit more. Um, again, we get a similar view for, you know, for the accounting department. This is how many virtual machines, how many virtual CPUs, what resources you're using, and the average cost of your virtual machines. And that gives us discussion points to help uh, the business kind of better understand that piece. Um, and then we can talk about cost savings. So if we tie this in with vRealize operations, we can start to understand how we can reclaim some of those costs from an IT perspective. We can right size those virtual machines. So if we have a finance department, they use Oracle servers, but maybe they provision too much memory, or we as an IT department have provisioned based on Oracle guidelines. We can understand where we can really optimize those environments and then give those, those cost savings back to those business units as well. Um, and then the final piece of this is really a high level look at what the costs are associated versus some of these public cloud environments. Again, I think VMware has really realized that the future looks doesn't look like a single on-premises data center, or nor does it look like only public cloud, we're only going to move everything we have into Microsoft Azure and be done with that. It's really going to be uh, uh, understanding of where our critical resources are and understanding the costs associated with that, the security associated with that, and then, uh, then from there determining where we want to run those different applications. So we really need these tools going forward to assess where to place workloads. It's not a question, it's not a one-size-fits-all piece where we're going to choose a vendor and and put our resources in that public cloud environment and kind of wash our hands of it. We're going to have software as a service, infrastructure as a service. We're going to use the best of breed technologies. Maybe Amazon is really good at, at data services or storage services, but Azure is better at certain other functionalities and monitoring pieces. We're going to use both of those. And then maybe we have our critical on-premises financial information that we want to keep in-house, and we're going to focus on that. Those, those public clouds will allow us to do, do those things and select and make selections where... Uh, we want to place those resources. But anyway, the, uh, back to the reporting piece of this, this really allows us to see, you know, the cost comparison at a high level of, you know, the vSphere private cloud for 365 VMs versus Amazon Web Services and Azure. And as you can see here, the costs for, for public cloud are higher if we take this whole environment and sort of lift it into the cloud. So that is something we want to really analyze on a per application basis. And we kind of look down here at the last part, we can take those virtual data centers and see what the current costs would be in each of these different environments. What we, what we pay today for, you know, our lab environment, $2,300 a month versus what it would cost if we lifted that entire piece into Amazon. Now, this is really, for me, the, the place where that leads into our other interface. So if we switch over to vRealize Business for Cloud, we can understand this at a more granular level. So again, back to what the HCA does with vRealize Business for Cloud, what it really does is we download the vRealize Business for Cloud virtual appliance, connect that into the customer's environment, and then we start to gather this data from that. And the, this appliance is what really produces that PDF report, but it also provides us the actual fully formed appliance, and we can look at the interactive bits of this and drill into some of that customer information when they start having questions. So I really think of the report as the 
you know, initial piece of this where we can, within a few hours, really grab that information and say, here's a deliverable for that. But then when we can fo have follow-ups or we, even within that same session, say, here's where I see, you know, important parts of your environment. And we're not looking at a static report, but we're looking at something more dynamic and really looking at more of those costs. So again, just a bit on this, we'll, we'll dive into this in subsequent sessions to talk about the parts and pieces a little bit more, but I think it's good to give you a high level view of, of really what business value this drives. So what we can see from the, the main dashboard is the infrastructure overview. Again, so how many virtual machines I have in our lab now. So 60 of those are private cloud or in our on-premises vSphere environment. And then the other components here, we've got 17 VMs in vCloud Air. If, if I connected this to my Azure instance and my AWS instance, those would show up in here as well. And um, we can see our top data center, so our Denver lab is shown here and how many virtual machines we've got there as well. And then the expenses across cloud. So we can look and see how much uh, vRealize Business has assessed for our on-premises environment, including you know, hardware, VMware licensing, Windows licensing, Linux licensing, all those components. And then from a cloud perspective, that as well. So we can say, well, what, what business units has cost us the most? And we can see that cost perspective as we kind of go along. Um, if we drill down a little bit more, we can see expenses on a, a per uh, private cloud basis. So we can drill down and say, well, what is really making up this cost comparison as we look at this. So um, we can see the overall cost of projected for the month is 8,839. Well, we know many of these are, are pieces that we've really already invested in capital. So we've already paid for servers and storage and licensing, but how does that break down over time? So we can use that to assess that versus the public cloud pieces. So if we look at any of this, if we scroll down, we can see that we've got hardware costs, storage on demand costs, licensing costs, and then we can actually look into these pieces and understand a bit more about how those work. So if I look into licensing, I've got the same kind of wheel type chart to say, okay, my Windows Server licensing is gonna cost me $200 a month per socket, and then I can understand where some of those costs come from. And I get visibility into that for the customer and saying, well, this is really where we're seeing those costs. How do you control those costs? We can look at that compared to other you know, Linux operating systems. And these, these pieces are actually pulled. VMware has done a lot of analysis on this data, so this is pre-populated. If you have customers that have really specific costs and they know this information, then they can plug that in as well. So I think that's a, a valuable piece as well. Now, similarly, with other cloud resources, I can go into our vCloud Air environment and look at some other costs associated with that as well. So I want to assess, you know, here's my on-premises piece, here's my public cloud piece. And now since vCloud Air is priced in a different way, so we buy, you know, kind of a block of compute. So we have 20 gigahertz of compute and a certain amount of memory. We can see some of the cost metrics around that of what, what of that capacity that we've purchased are we utilizing and what um, is unallocated and that we aren't actually actively using. So we want to use that to the best of our ability um, as far as, you know, maximum re re resource utilization. So there's a bunch of pieces in here. Um, I think that kind of gives you an overview of what this looks like. Uh, I, I also would say, you know, the ultimate piece of this is we at Arrow are really a resource for this. So we're looking more and more at how we can leverage these types of VMware assessments to help you and help customers understand those costs. Because it's really difficult to navigate the landscape of I've built all of this infrastructure on premises. I've got resources. I've got capital that I've invested in that. But I also see some value in cloud, maybe for disaster recovery or test. How do I answer those questions of which applications go where? So this is really the piece that starts to do that. And this is where we as Arrow are starting to, we've built that expertise around cloud assessments and understanding how we make those decisions around which uh, applications go into which components, which which stay on premises in our data center, which ones go into that the public cloud, or which ones are hybrid. So the other final piece we look at this is really the cloud comparison part. So I think this is valuable to say, you know, what if I want to deploy a new virtual machine? Uh, where should I do that? Where should I start off? A business unit comes in and says, we want this application from an IT perspective. We know that that's going to be five virtual machines. How do we assess costs across these environments? And what we can do with this tool is really take a look at the customer's actual private cloud. So here it's assessed that, you know, my in my data center, it costs $729 per month for these 10 virtual machines with these specific uh, attributes. And we can compare that across different resources. So I could add, you know, Microsoft Azure in here, but we see AWS versus the vCloud Air environment. And then when we have a business request that, we can really assign costs to that and know what that cost 
is for the customer and we can build that into our chargeback or showback models. So again, there's a lot of detail here, but I think this screen is one of the most compelling pieces that after we've seen the HCA initial report, we can use this information for that customer environment and say, here, here's what this would cost you. And then we can make changes to these components as well and get really detailed as to these are the different virtual machines that you have. Um, these are the pieces that are costing you. If we move this to a different Amazon region, we may save dollars. If we resize this to a specific you know, AWS instance, we may be able to save dollars in that regard. Or if this virtual machine only needs to live for three months to do development, it's gonna make more sense for that. So this is really the initial step into assigning those cost values for, for those customers. So really where this is generated is, is when we go down to the reporting section, the cloud business analysis is, is the part that generates that PDF that we saw previously. So we can see, you know, what gives us an overview of what that component is. We kind of dove into that and then we can download that PDF report. But I think as a whole, that, that dynamic interface of allowing businesses to see and really connect those dots is something that's, that's really helpful. So, but most importantly, again, this is just really an overview for you to help understand, does this fit your business? And I think there's a lot of, you know, cloud virtualization and data center businesses within the reseller partners that we have that could leverage a tool like this. But the most important piece is once you've determined that to reach out to us on the Aero team to help connect and understand how we do this and how we can find those partners where this makes the most sense. And we can help build you know, your expertise in that so we can go in and maybe even do some joint sessions where we say, here's how we can analyze those environments and here's how we deploy the appliance. Here's how we interpret the report. So we will, we're here to help you to do that. Um, we're actually gonna try to build some incentives around this to help you get out and find those customers. We'll help you pinpoint which, yeah, which customers this fits for, the, the customers that are really trying to evaluate cloud and understand, help you to be the, the trusted advisor to help them make those decisions on when and where we actually use uh, the tool to put applications into cloud environments or into their on-premises environment or where they actually have some virtual machines on-premises and some in the cloud in a hybrid model. So feel free to reach out to me, tlawrence at arrow.com or at tlawrence on Twitter uh, or also in the comments below. And we're glad to kind of help you build this practice, understand this tool, use this as part of your tool belt and extend that to do a more assessment-based piece rather than having customers you know, feel like they really don't understand when to utilize cloud, that they don't run into those instances where they build an application in AWS or Azure and get that monthly bill and be really surprised that, you know, that costs me much more than I thought because of the utilization uh, versus, you know, running that on premises. So as always, reach out to me or our inside sales or channel manager teams. And uh, we'll please be on the lookout for additional videos in this regard along this assessment and other assessments. Thanks for joining me today.